Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 37 for January 12, 2021. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. First, I want to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters, Jason Schaefer. Uh, thank you for your contribution to the Beer Baseball blog as the uh, cleanup hitter level. Thank you so much. And a big thank you to our super supporter, Cowboy Jack Durango, uh, on the power hitter level. As a power hitter, Jack has been invited to our January 23 episode of the Beer Baseball Hoppy Hour. So we'll be talking about more about that. And uh, we actually have one this weekend on uh, January 16th, which we'll talk about at the end of the show. If you would like to be a Patreon subscriber or a supporter, uh, please look up Beer Baseball on Patreon. And we also have updated our eBay page. So if you right. check out Beer Baseball blog, uh, we give 20% of our uh, portions to support Fibro. So check that out. Um, if you're, you know, if you see something and hey, you're not into the team, you just know that if you're picking it up, you're supporting a charity, but you're also supporting us. We also have our Etsy store. Look up Beer Baseball on Etsy, where you can get magnets and uh, beer coasters, stickers, buttons. We have a whole bunch of cool stuff on there. But let's get to the lineup card. We do not have Angelo Trinidad here today. That's not uh, Angelo? That is not Angelo. Yes, it looks like him in the dark. He, he has a very dark uh, background right there. Or, I had, I had uh, a, a reconstruction video. surgery that went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so an like comedy, you know? I mean, like, you know, like vice versa, you know, something like that. So Angelo is not here. Hopefully he'll be back hey. next week. Uh, but John Talwar, John Top Gun Talwar is here, a, a frequent guest of the Beer Baseball Blogcast. Uh, welcome, John. Hey, thank you so much for having me on again. Uh, there's a, that's, I like that picture there, El, uh, Corvo Negro. It sounds like a good loop door name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like that a lot. And Kevin Lyon is here as well, in, in the nick of time, as always. As always, yeah, you know. Get up and work. I'm like, I gotta get ready. I gotta just take a quick shower, jump in, get fresh and ready to go for the beer baseball broadcast. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we're, we're glad to have you. And uh, I am Michael Mondragon. So let's get into it right away. And uh, actually, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna jump in. I'm actually gonna do, uh, do some shout outs. We always have uh, really great uh, viewers that come in every week. Bubble Pug, hello hey. to you. Cowboy happy Jack happy. Durango uh, writing a soliloquy here. I don't know if we have enough time to write. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can, can I do it, please? Can I read it, please? Go for it. Go for it. You know I'm flying high in the danger zone when T Jizzle's on the show. My soulmate, brother, best friend, and man of honor. He's the lady's pet and the man's regret. Top Gun, Talwar. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You should have definitely, you should have, we should have, should have talked this over before. I got to have you do all the Cowboy Jack stuff. You did it amazing. Man. Nicely <laughs> done. Right now, Mike. I'm ready. When's, hey, uh, when's, uh, joining. when's Cowboy Jack going to be a guest on the show? I think. Well, that's well, we have, we have, January 23rd. He's going to be on the hop. Wow. Yes. So, um, Matt Harper. Hey, Matt Harper. Thank you so much for joining. And yeah. Okay. Here you go, Kevin. Woo! <laughs> I'm better, better doing a problem than that. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> yes, he got he got off the hard drugs. He did. He's, he's a reformed man. Now he's on. I don't know. What he's on. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Duncan is here. Thank you so much, Chad M. Oh, hey, a, Chad. A, uh, a benefactor to the Beer Baseball Blog. Thank you so much, All Angels Podcast. <laughs> Triple thumbs up. Um, yeah, so I mean, we have all the we all, all the usual characters uh, in our in our chat. So thank you so much. And okay, I say, so I have, say, I have to say, even just as a, a viewer, being in that chat's a lot of fun. Um, just every week, just going in there, I look forward to it quite a bit. That's awesome. Yeah, we we see you in there, but you're in there as a you're not a, in as Top Gun. You're a, you have a, you have another pseudonym, don't you? <laughs> I want I want I want to expose that. You know, okay. in there. Okay, yeah, so just we, should, we should get you. A, we should get you a TGT. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on my burner, on my burner account. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. All right. 
so let's uh, let's get out and get into this. Uh, Top Gun Tall War, what are you uh, drinking tonight? Uh, this week I'm drinking a Golden Road Melon Cart. Uh, nothing fancy. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big Golden Road fan, especially these ones. Um, honestly, I'm not a big uh, beer drinker. Uh, I probably, in 2020 alone, I probably had over a thousand White Claws. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 you know in um, March of 2020, you had a thousand white claws, right? I think so. Just <laughs> one month. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm you. come on. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, one of my one of my favorite uh, breweries. At least uh, I was actually going to grab an IPA as well that I had, but uh, I think I was, wasn't feeling it. Feeling something a little bit lighter, so I went with the melon cart today. Well, so I, I have you. I want to ask a question. Have you tried the spicy mango cart? I have not. I didn't realize there was a spicy one. Yeah, that, that, that came out, like, I believe, last year, and I've seen it. I go, oh, that that might be good, and I haven't actually tried it yet. So I figured that'd be right up your alley if you like the mango car. You'll probably really enjoy the spicy one. Yeah, yeah I really miss awesome. Indian, you know. So obviously, you like spicy stuff, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, high, yeah. Very high tolerance for it too. Yes. Right? There you go. Well, I, d I did see the stock of White Claw went up this year, or last year. It's all because of John right there. So. It's all because of John, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, so that's awesome. So thank you for that. Uh, Kevin, you have actually a new one that I'm actually excited to hear about. Yeah, so this is a brewery that literally just opened up about half a mile from my house. They had like a secret like pre-sale for this. Hang on. There we go. There's that sound. It's almost as good as – it's better to me than opening a pack of baseball cards. <laughs> right. um, yeah, because there was a place that was over here called Town Park Brewing. And it's literally, for those who live in Orange County or the LA area, it's right by Disneyland. If you get out the five at Lincoln, it's pretty much one exit, depending on what one exit from Disneyland, depending on which way you're heading. And, um, you know, and I was like, oh, I've been going by recently and I saw something new going on. Oh, someone's taking over the space. And then they're called Radiant. So they had a sale for three beers to go right now. This is one of them. This is becoming more real. It's a hazy IPA. They also have another IPA I have uh, in the fridge, I think called Parallel Path, and a whipped beer, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm, after having these, I definitely want to get that one too. I might have to go by the tomorrow and get that whipped beer, which is yeah. definitely not my favorite, but I'm like, you know what? I got to try these IPAs first. Oh, and I think yeah. you can try the coloring of the can and all that. But Yeah, I, I'm loving it. Um, it. It Actually, all of their stuff has a really uh, great like color scheme, and it looks yeah. like um, if like uh, Punch Drunk Love, like it, it reminds me of like that movie, like all the coloring yeah. and stuff like that, and each beer has it, uh, and, and their branding is, is look excellent. Look at that haze. Look at that yeah. haze. There's some haze right I was, there. I was, I was going to compliment the logo. That's really, uh, it's really appealing. Yeah, super and cool. If you go by, they 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 have like they've been putting up some coloring, some color outside. Because what they, the last brewery was really just a kind of like a plain like black and white scheme, mostly just white on the outside, and they've been putting in some coloring in there, working on the outside. Because I mean, guys, keep keeping an eye on it. The last couple months, whenever I drive or walk by there, so I'm really excited to have a new brewery opening up. Uh, you know, literally again, half mile from my house or so. So. Once things are open up more, I might be going over there and hanging out, you know, hopefully not too often. <laughs> yeah, J Jason actually water, comes but... up with something pretty cool here. I mean, like he, he said he didn't even know what, what a hazy IP IPA was before this show. Um, but it's his go-to. Yeah, and and uh, right. for, for me too, like I love IPAs, but the hazy has, has been become uh, one of my favorites as well. I know that, you know, Right away, I'm going to try the IPA. I'm going to go to that. Right. That's usually one of my go-tos. Uh, but then the hazies now are just like, you know, I'm definitely going to that. It's just a sweeter uh, version of it, I think. And that's still, it's still not really that, been around like that, that long. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I've been, I've been having IPAs and, be, and like craft beers for like a decade or so. And I don't remember them being around 10 years ago. So it might still right. be a relatively new no, no, either that or I just wasn't aware of it because I was still just kind of like weaving my way around and learning about this. Right. And and then like the New England IPAs, you know, came into, you know, they're kind of in vogue. But um, um, but yeah, I, I I love it all. And that's great. And actually, I was thinking uh, because well, isn't Disneyland going to be a, uh, a vaccination spot? So, hey, go get your vaccination and go over to Radiant. Beer. Hey, yeah, go to Radiant. You know, it, like I said, it, it's off the Lincoln exit, off the five. It's it's just right there. If you're heading, if I said which direction you're is, it's your one stop before the Disneyland exit. If you're heading uh, south from LA, or if you're heading towards LA, it's one exit past would be Harbor or the Disneyland exit. Yeah, or if you're, and this, if, you're, if you're if you're hesitant to get vaccinated, have a drink before 
or two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> loosen I mean, you up. You, well, I mean, you can't consume the beer on the premises right now. They're like, they're just selling these like these four packs. There's like I said, there's these there's, there's this the other IPA and a whip beer. If you want to try it out? You know, don't drink it on site, but you know. Yeah. Exactly. Find somewhere else to drink it. <laughs> yeah, and this would be a go-to place if we were going to Angels games. So um, I, I can't wait to do that as well. All right, so my beer tonight um, is actually from our good friend Alan Jepson. Hey, hey Kate, Thane. wait, what, what, wait, what, 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 wait, what? Uh, well, he told yeah, he actually just about? told me he actually just told me to get the beer. So um, I'll, I'll say that. So uh, right. this is from Electric Bicycle Brewing. Uh, in Vancouver, British Columbia, it well, is the. What? We have our first. We have a Canadian beer. That's our what? first Canadian beer. So wow. uh, I, I love, I love this, this I artwork. Our first and beer, sir. I don't think we've had any any other international beers yet. Uh, it's that? it's the it's no game hazy hazy IPA. Okay, go ah, of course, go. right? Uh, it feature is uh, yeah, it has citra and mosaic hops, 6.5 ABV, 47 IBU. I have not tried it yet, so I'm actually right. gonna give it a go here. And while you're drinking that, I do like on the on the can it says strong beer, then I see it says beer, and I can't but it says it in French next to that. That's interesting, That's right. even in, um, you know, even in Vancouver, you know, I, I would think you know, like French is pretty much the primary language in the Quebec. Uh, province but i was like oh that's interesting seeing that that, that written in you know in french out even all down the west coast and you, you know what it reminds yeah. what's the Sorry? alcohol percentage from that it is 6.5 oh okay all right. yeah so it's pretty it's um uh, i mean it's it would that's be higher good. for somebody who who would not be used to that level mm -hmm. for me it's a little under because usually like seven between seven and eight is usually kind of my go-to but yeah um, this is a six six too so yeah that, that seems to be kind of the average for a, a lot of IPAs would be between like around six to half ish. I would say I've had a lot yeah. of IPAs that are between six and, around six to seven. Yeah, and it, so this I think um, there's a brewery that we really like a lot that's in uh, Silver by Dodger Stadium. It's called Highland Park. It, mm -hmm. This really reminds me of that. It's a little oh, bit. Cool. Um, it's not as uh, probably because it's canned. Um, it's probably not as. Uh, and then we're getting it fresh from Highland Park, so it's it's pretty yeah. fresh. But this is a little bit flatter than that, but uh, still really good. It's actually very um, real juicy. So I was just um, digging the can. I was just digging the artwork on the can. I, you know, I was like, all right. Everybody's <laughs> artwork. I mean, the the craft beer artwork. The game is so like strong right now. Super. I'm just cool. curious if there's a story behind like this particular artwork. You know, because I was like, oh, it's cool. It's a new brewery. No, you know, nothing really about this. So. That's, that's a cool. That's, that's a cool find. I mean, it's weird that a package of beer just mysteriously appeared at my house one day from Vancouver. Who do have thunk? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's the kind of can you want to take some hallucinogenics and just have. A <laughs> yep, <laughs> it'll talk to you in your sleep. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, Cowboy Jack Durango says he's drinking a uh, Mickey's forty ounce and some vodka. So like, All yeah. Right. So he, so um, yeah, he's got to save that for the uh, for the pack wars. <laughs> All right, so let's. Whoop! I skipped oh, ahead. Oh. Uh, this day in oh, baseball yeah, history right. for January twelfth, January twelfth, nineteen eighty one. Gaylord Perry, eleven victories shy of three hundred career wins, signs a one year contract with John's Atlanta Braves, valued right. at three hundred thousand dollars. The forty two year old boy, forty two, oh, right? Forty two. Forty five, and I'm like, whoa! He lived a good life there. The 42-year-old future Hall of Famer will compile an 8-9 compile an and nine record while posting a 3.96 ERA for the fifth-place Braves. Now, he didn't get to 300 wins, but would get to that next year when he uh, signed with Seattle. And, um, and then he was uh, actually with Seattle again in 83 and then finished his career in 83 uh, with the Royals. And um, John, you actually have uh, something kind of special over there um, for Gaylord Perry, correct? I do actually. It's uh, if you can see a little bit of a glare here, and I apologize for that. This is uh, from 1962 Tops. Nice. It's his actual rookie card here, but wow. he started with the Giants. Yeah, nice. I, think, I know. I know he played for eight teams. He pitched for eight teams in his career, which he is did. insane. Well, but it seems like more than eight. <laughs> that which was, uh, this was about 19, 19 years prior from the picture that you were showing. Uh, so an incredible transformation. Probably, yeah. probably partied a bit, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, who knows yeah. it's in the glove, you know? I, I Oh, well, there you go. There's a hard part <laughs> there. So this is what I love about baseball is that like guys like Keeler Ferry, you know, he looks like a top flight athlete, right? You know, I love, I love that about baseball. It, it, it all comes in all shapes and sizes. This has got to be the inspiration for the guy in major league. You know what? You're absolutely probably right it's on that. It's got to be the total inspiration for that. With like, I can't remember the character's name, but the older pitcher on the team, it's like, yeah. it's so that's so him. Because I, I'm like, my gosh, they look a lot similar. Yeah, I would say this picture had to be the inspiration for that. You're absolutely <laughs> right. And then yeah, we, um, we actually got to see him, uh, uh, Mike, you and I got to see him speak at the All-Star Game. Uh, what year? I can't remember. 2016. 2016 in San Diego. We actually got to right. see him speak at one of the conventions. Which is great. Yeah, we he was speaking, and we, we it was at the uh, MLB Fan Fest. So they had they had all this really cool memorabilia there. They had like a uh, not a full size field, but almost like a wiffle ball field where you could take grounders and stuff like that in, indoors. And then um, yeah, we we remember I remember sitting down, and there was like there wasn't a whole bunch of people there, but I'm like. There's a Hall of yeah. Famer and 300 game winner right here. Let's let's listen to him talk. <laughs> I know, very very intimate. Like, uh, we, I mean, we seize that opportunity to actually listen in. I've seen also, like, I think I went to the one at uh, when they had an Anaheim here. He was signing uh, autographs for twenty dollars uh, baseball. Wow! So, wow! Wow! Think, uh, yeah, this is definitely definitely stuck around the game quite a bit. Continuing wow. his presence. All Angels podcast uh, said, yeah, and Tom Brady's yeah. 43. Yeah. I, I saw that when they, they posted the, I think it was, um, was it George Blanda? Like uh, he tied him for like uh, throwing touchdown. He was the oldest person to throw a touchdown in a playoff game. And George Blanda looks like he's 80. <laughs> yeah, I know. And he was like in his mid 40s, living the hard life, you know? Yeah. Baseball is body positive, 100%. <laughs> yep. <laughs> on January 12th, 1983, Orioles legend and perennial gold glover Brooks Robinson becomes the 14th player elected to the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility. The Baseball Writers Association of America also selects right-hander Juan Marichal, the former ace of the Giants and all-time winningest pitcher from Latin America with 243 victories in his third year of being on the ballot. Yeah, I was um, I was surprised that Juan Marichal um, actually... Uh, was later. Wow. He was, um, yeah, there, that, took that, three years, but you know, that was the whole thing is like, there's, there's those people who will not vote for a guy their first year, no matter what. I mean, Brooks, yeah. Brooks definitely is, is yeah. first year, you know, I mean, not just a, a great offensive player, but he, he was like the defensive wizard of that era. You know, yeah. if you can put an Ozzy Smith kind of a guy, I'm like, this guy was like, my gosh, serious for that. He was incredible at the third base path. Just look at some clips of him playing third base and, Man, he was awesome. Yeah, and it was in the days of like the kind of the first years of like AstroTurf too. So he yeah. was like he knew like how to how to play those, and then also like learn how to skip it on, mm -hmm. on the AstroTurf to get it there yeah. quicker as well. I thought that was pretty interesting. And he was just spot on when he would throw, like. There's some plays in like World Series play where it's like he's all the way at third base, half sideways, and he uh, pivots and throws it to first base in time. Yeah. I yeah, I think a topic for a future show should be around that uh, Marischal Rose Barrel Rose Barrel. Oh goodness! Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh goodness! That, yeah, that was a that was a big yeah. deal at the time because I remember like later on in Marischal's career, like he was with the Dodgers, so like there had to be like a kind of a, a peace treaty, like it, yeah. it had to be no it had to like me. Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. It was a very interesting story. Oops, sorry, it's all right. Uh, oh, I, I did that on my side. I apologize myself. <laughs> um, January 12th, 1988, Willie Stargell, ah. who played his entire 21 year career with the pirates is the only person elected to the baseball hall of fame this year. Now, why is Jim Bunning in this picture? Nine writers submitted blank ballots denying Jim Bunning entrance to Cooperstown because he receives oh. less than 75% needed of induction due to the votes that are counted, but do not name any players. So they actually, wow. I think, did it on purpose, potentially. Why? Do we know why? That is a very good question. I, okay. I, I saw this and I wanted to follow up on it because uh, Jim Bunning is um, the only player to actually, what, be a congressman and- Yeah, I believe, was he a senator or was he, he was a senator, wasn't he? I believe so. Okay. I don't know what he's saying, but he just passed away. I think, believe a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. 
2017. Yeah. 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 yeah and here, here's actually, uh, I, this is actually from my, uh, my personal collection, a, a wow. autograph of, of one him. Of one. Wow. Yeah. yeah so I, he I definitely. He did in the Hall of Fame, am I correct? He did, right? Yeah. Okay. That's I what think, I thought. I, I thought so. he did. Yeah, but uh, he could have been voted in like right away, right. and it yeah. would have been right then. But uh, because he had those blank votes, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, that's bizarre. It's kind of tragic, actually, because yeah, I think that if it, what now, if I'm not mistaken, was he? Did he die before he was? Got uh, that? I, mean, I, I have to find that out. He was inducted in '96. Okay, yeah, so I then see, he was I thought it was before he passed away. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So speaking of Philadelphia, actually, um, is it? Let me look back here. Uh, oh, you can't see it in this picture. Actually, Steve Carlton's actually uh, to the right of this picture. Oh, uh, that's funny. To wait to the right of Bunning or to the right of or, or, or Bunning of Bunning. Yeah. Bunning. Okay. I was wondering if you. It, was might, like, it might have been Jim Cod as well. Jim Cod. Really? Um, January twelfth, nineteen ninety four, in his first year on the ballot, Steve Carlton garnering ninety five point six percent of the writers' votes is the only player to be selected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Lefty, a 24-year veteran best known for his 15 seasons with the Phillies, won 329 games and collected four National League Cy Young Awards. Wow. And, and you know, you, we, we talk about – I mean, he's actually come up so many times on the Beer Baseball broadcast. Yeah. Uh, John, did you know that he was on Married with Children? I did not. No, I, I want to go back and see that episode. <laughs> I, I that we did bring that up. I forgot. I'm like, wait, did we talk about that? We did. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll definitely have to. Uh, you'll definitely have to look that one up. Yeah, I'm actually, I had a fascination recently. Yeah, that's on YouTube. We can put it in our reference list. Cool. Looking up the history of baseball players on like uh, shows, or even like I was watching this old Simpsons episode, the baseball episode. And, yeah, it just brought oh, up yeah. some interest in looking up like oh, what's the history of baseball players and TV yeah. shows. So. Oh yeah, definitely. I remember I taped an episode of Simon and Simon because Duke Snyder was on it and some other guys. It was like 1988, 89. I was like, it's towards the end of that Simon and Simon show because that was actually a pretty popular show for a few years. That's right. That's right. And we, we talked about like um, Alan Trammell and uh, Lou yeah. Whitaker being on Magnum um, PI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we always try to bring that up whenever we can. Uh, the yeah. kind of cross. Uh, <laughs> Cross promotions. I wish I remember the show where we saw that with Steve Garvey like attacking like people. Oh, that's, people right. that's right. <laughs> that's right. I can't remember what show that was. Unfortunately, I'll look back on that. January twelfth, nineteen ninety nine. An anonymous bidder purchases the historic seventieth home run ball hit by Cardinal slugger Mark McGuire on his final swing on the last day of the season. The three. Uh, three million dollar price tag far su surpasses the previous record paid for a baseball, topping the one hundred and twenty six thousand five hundred dollar which was spent to obtain the ball that Babe Ruth hit in his first homer at Yankee Stadium. Wow. And can you imagine, like, uh, like at the time, what what this was like three point five million? That was like, twenty two like, years ago. That's insane. And to imagine what that ball would be worth now, the, the Babe Ruth ball. And the Babe Ruth yeah. be worth three and a half million dollars, and this is probably worth like what? What the Babe Ruth ball was worth then. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And and uh potentially more, you know, just from you know, people trying to yeah. seek it out. And um, you know, demand was high at the time, but the steroids oh, yeah. scandal and uh Multiple experts say the ball, that ball right now is probably worth about three hundred to four hundred thousand um, dollars. And this is Todd McFarland. Yeah. Uh, I actually have. I hope I don't break everything when I do this. Yeah. No. Um, Todd McFarland would do toys like this. And oh, right Albert Paul. Uh, but his, the the detail in his uh, toy making and everything was so amazing. Oh yeah. And um, yeah. So at the time, you know, he was kind of like this. A uh, guy who would get on top of these types of deals, and uh, it. I, I saw a thing on TMZ, um, and he says, "Like I bought that ball in 1999. It is now 2020, 21 years later, and you guys are still talking about it." So he figures that he's made his worth in it because it actually made him like a household name as somebody who bought that ball at the time. Um, uh, but he also so makes more important than Spawn. Okay. At the time, he, he was he was investing a lot of stuff like this, right? 
And um, he says, so I don't, he says, I don't care if I get $20 for that ball. I'm clean on this deal. Wow. Okay. I'm <laughs> I can't believe that. And ask if I can buy it for $21. <laughs> right. <laughs> that might hey, be a good uh, it's crazy to see like the deflation, even like uh, the Mark McGuire uh, rookie card was on the Olympic team. Uh, that was so, that was so valuable around that time. Right. I remember on eBay, yeah. like, like scoping that out and like, it's like, it, and I was able to get it like maybe like a few years back for like fifteen dollars on eBay, like almost a oh mint condition version of it. Wow. And uh, yeah, back then it was like the most sought after card. Yeah, right. Uh, so it's amazing to see the impact of like you know some of the, the value of some of these things from that time frame. Totally. And lastly, January twelfth, two thousand nine, Ricky Henderson in his first year of eligibility, and Jim Rice in his final year on the ballot are elected to the Hall of Fame. Henderson, who will enter Cooperstown Shrine as a member of the A's, is the game's all-time stolen base leader. And Rice, who spent his entire 16-year career with the Red Sox, compiled a 298 bat lifetime batting average and was considered a dominant player in his era. So, um, yeah, uh, John, you actually have uh, a Ricky Henderson. Uh, yeah, who doesn't? Uh, the show. I, oh, I had that one point too. Oh, I had everyone, that card. Everyone needs a rookie, Ricky Henderson rookie card in their life. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. Got that card? I actually bought a pack. Of, is that 1980? Yes. Uh, yesterday is 1980 tops. Yep. I actually bought a pack of that at a card show in the late 80s or so, and I actually pulled that card out. Oh, oh no man. kidding! I actually pulled it. I bought one that I pulled it out. I was like, ah. And actually had one of his minor league cards too at one point. And obviously that's gone now, unfortunately. Wow. I was going to say, Kevin, where are those cards in today? I, I don't know. The minor league set's completely gone. At least I have the bats. At least I have the bats and some autographs. Thank goodness. Yes. Yes. And I'll tell you right now, I don't really want to watch the Hall of Fame. It's, you know, the induction ceremony that much, but I'm like, I got to see Ricky Anderson's speech. <laughs> If anybody yeah. knows about Ricky Anderson, it, and unfortunately it was kind of a letdown because it's a whole bit. If, if anybody knows the comedian David Cross, look up David Cross, Ricky Anderson. It's amazing because Ricky is the guy who will talk in the third person. And I was hoping for that. I was going to be the greatest speech ever. And I was, I, I'll say, I was pretty disappointed. But, you know, it's still watching Ricky and Mike. He was, well, he was like an icon of that era in the 80s. Yeah. He was incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. Incredible. Yeah. Player. Yeah. It, he, I mean, he continued through the night. When did he retire? Well, well it, eligibility. So that would have been two, after 2003. Yeah. And incredible. then he actually played locally. I don't remember what year it was for an independent team in Long Beach. We, right. I know we've talked about on the show before. I don't recall the year, but it's just like, oh my gosh. He yeah. just kept going and going and going. And, and there's, there's who would be comparable to him right now? No one's, no one's stayed that consistent. In terms yeah. of like the stolen yeah. bases, longevity, there's no no one to compare. And his power, you can't deny power his power at the lead off record right. too for like most. I don't remember the number, but he had a pretty good amount of home runs, and he had the record for like most game, most like lead off home runs. You know. Yeah, definitely but one the of the ones he did. You know. Yeah, Mark McGuire was a hundred percent pure American athlete. Uh, well said. Well, yes, well absolutely. said. Yes. Yes. All right, so let's go to baseball card pack wars. Now, John doesn't have packs, so actually we'll uh, be playing uh, for him on our side. Uh, yep. I was going to do another game, but I'm just going to keep it simple. All and, right. uh, I have the big league baseball, so we'll just I use right. that for okay. him. You want to play for him? Yeah, yeah. So here are the standings. Uh, John's uh, oh, results will go in, in the guess. Um, Kevin, our 2020 champ, uh, since you're the champ, uh, I'll let you go first. Oh, um, okay. real quick, saying, here, does it want to let John choose who he wants to have played for him? Oh, that's that's a great idea. That's a great idea. So yeah, so you know, you can pick John uh, when we get to you. I'm gonna go first. Let's start with big league baseball 2020. Because okay. I have enough packs. I, I believe you do too, Michael. Right? Yes. Okay. Good. All right, so here, here are the rules, um, and um, so we'll get ahead of um, we'll just pause there so you can take a look at those. Um, usually, everybody knows how we play. We'll we'll walk you through it as well. But high numbered card wins, um, and then we have the third round, which is the wild card, which we'll figure something out for that as well. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's uh, let me switch this over. Whoop, that's not what I want. 
and go for it. Want what you want, what you really want is me. <laughs> right. Um, Michael, I meant to ask, what's that Duke shirt you have? Can oh I, yes. Can you go? Can you go? When you when you're, uh, what, I was like, there it is, Albuquerque oh, Dukes. Oh, because look, I mean, I almost matched you today. I got my mariachi shirt from the Albuquerque. Oh, uh, I almost got, I like, oh, I got my Duke shirt, but I, I didn't know where it was. But this is the uh, the Los Mariachi in Rivo Mexico. Yeah. Which is the uh, you know the uh, Copa de la Diversión for the um, for the uh, Albuquerque guys to Yep. Anyways, and then when when uh, when John comes up, we'll, I'll have John on. He can show us the cool stuff that he's wearing. Go all right. It. Yeah, because I was curious about the hat. All right. I have Ian Desmond. American League uh, wins leaders. This would be Justin Verlander, Garrett Cole, and Eduardo Rodriguez. Daniel Murphy. Oh, this looks like a good card here. I got the 2019 National League saves leader, so you know who's on there. Kirby Yates, Will Smith, but in the middle there, Josh Hader. We're right, let's do it. Party, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, got a drink. Here. All right. Started off way there in last week, brewer-wise. All right, we got Mitch Hanniger. Uh, for I got one of the characters here. This is Juan Soto. Put that off the side there. Uh, my orange parallel is uh, Gary Sanchez. Award winner is Mr. Mike Trout. We got uh, Randall Grichuk and Michel Baez. Nice. Uh, Michel I don't know. <clears throat> okay, John, who do you want to uh, pull for you? Um, why don't you go first? Okay. And then we'll, based on who has the better pool, let's see who's hey, 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 <laughs> Whoa, whoa. So, uh, my hat is the Grand Junction Rockies. Oh, yeah. That's right. So, that. And this and is actually, the, uh, they, engine. Yep. And, uh, yeah, yeah they were in the Pioneer League, but they're no longer a, uh, affiliated, uh, Major League Baseball team. Oh, they got, they didn't make it, huh? Yeah, they um, didn't make it. And if, if you look on the Beer Baseball Blog uh, YouTube page, there is a video of him going to that Grand Junction Stadium. Yep. That was, I really like that a lot. So this is for uh, John Talwar. Let's see what he what he has. He didn't say that. What? He said you go first. Then he'll decide. Oh, well, I'm going to go. I mean, it's his turn. So this no, is it's his. not. He said he's going he to he diver, he, he gave up his turn. He wants to see okay. which one of us got a better pack. Then he'll decide. We can rotate. We can rotate. All right. Oh, oh I, see. I see. I see. Okay. Well, we're, we we're starting out hot. Yeah. With, we're starting oh, hot yeah. with a brewer. Okay. I like it. I like it. Okay. <laughs> that was the next pack will be an autograph. You'll be like, oh, shoot. Mitch Keller. Uh, oh, this is cool. Uh, career highlights. Uh, each oh, right. Nice. There was that uh, one where it was in the Tokyo Dome. Nice. Uh, Yadier Molina. Danny Santana. Uh, Max Kepler flipping out. Nice. The orange parallel is Andrew McCutcheon. Nick Solak, rookie card. And uh, Otani Shohei. Nice. Highlights. And oh, Zach Gallon. All right, so this you're saying. Um, well, I, I was. Well, he said it's like I'll, I'll pick after I see who got after everybody pulled their packs. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll take that pack. Okay, <laughs> so that's fine. Okay, so then this is uh, this is my pack. Yep. <laughs> so we're at the stall once uh, you open yours. You got two. You got you got two packs here. Find your high card. Uh, Willie Adamas, uh, Angels highlights, uh, the combo no no. Oh, yeah, that was incredible. Paul, Paul DeYoung, that was pretty incredible. And what a day to do it, right? Oh, yeah, Trent Grisham, and Angel's at that game. That's right, Walker Bueller, Freddie Galvis, Bueller. Uh, new uh, New York Met Carlos Carrasco on the orange. Nolan Arenado, uh, the defensive wizards. 
Joey Gallo. And highlights Albert Pujols becomes Mr. 2000. Was uh in the year 2000? Yeah, exactly. 20. Yeah. Or not okay. like 2019, technically, I should say. All right. So, Kevin, uh, what is your high card? I better, I better stall here. Uh, I better stall because you have two people to figure it out here. Actually, my, my high card is. A war wears Mike Trout number two eight five out of three hundred. That's pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. I like that one. So, oh, okay. So I do have two. So, okay. Yeah, you do have two. It's all right. We can talk amongst ourselves for a moment. John, yeah. uh, why don't you mention what the uh, what's that hat you have on? Oh yeah. So this is a Japanese professional team, the Hanshin Tigers. Actually, yeah. Got I got it at the Tokyo Dome in uh, 2019 when I was over in Japan. Um, I was actually there. They're having like their World Series equivalent. I was there that day. I just couldn't oh, get wow. a ticket. Like, I just I didn't uh, really actually prepare for it. So, uh, but in the future, I'd like to make another trip out there and actually, uh, you know, actually attend some games. Um, I think that'd be exciting, especially just like the you look at the you know video, you see the environment, or even the world, even the World Baseball Classic out here when we went and uh, Dodger Stadium. Yep. Japan was playing. It was just incredible. Yep. Um, I, we even have a friend from uh, wrestling. He's a referee for – he used to, uh, I think, ref for Osaka Pro. And I think now he uh, refs for uh, Osaka-style wrestling uh, led by Kushinbo. His name is Yoshino. So he's a big Hanshin Tigers fan. He actually plays – I think he plays the trumpet at those games. But he actually plays the instrument mm -hmm. at those games. He's like a super fan of baseball. Um, I think I think he was like one of their their cheer in their cheerleading. They they, they do section cheerleading. I think he was yeah. like a part of that. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, right. but he does. Play, I think he play, he does play an instrument as well, on yep. top of it. But, yeah, and, definitely. and who's wanted dead? Oh, this is a this is a Japanese version of the uh, Cactus Jack. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I was wondering, like, because that's the famous Cactus Jack. Show. I didn't know they made a Japanese version of that. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. Non non baseball related, but wrestling related. That's Just all right. It's kind fine. Of, it kind of mashed the hat. So, it, 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 you, I can see why you did that. Good job. So, John, your high card is two ninety four <laughs> with the show yeah, here, Johnny. I knew that was a winner. But oh, my oh, high my card God. is the Angels. No, no, oh, two ninety nine. We all had Angels high cards. Yep. And I and Mike Trout finished in last. Yeah. All right, that tells you something. So that's it. All right. Oh, so, you're up. You're up, Michael. I am up. All right. So let's do this again. All right. So I have the hot hand. <laughs> well, you had two packs. Come on. Okay. Revisionist history. Okay. Um, Asterisk. Yes. Uh, the whip leaders in the uh, American League. Oh, I was hoping it was national. Yeah. Um, Max Freed of John's Atlanta Braves. Aaron Nola. That's a quite that's quite an odd picture. Like I would I would hate that on there. <laughs> I just kind of like what is happening. Like lethargic right there. Oh. Nomar Mazzara. You've heard of this guy, probably. Nah. Yeah. You mean the guy who was uh, at the bottom of the picture? Yeah. Garrett Cole. He's, he's got a little something up his sleeve right there. Yeah, I know. I was like, is he setting signs? I mean, <laughs> the orange uh, is the Luis Arreas. Patrick Corbin. Uh, Michael Conforto. And Jorge Polanco. So that is my pack. Uh, I'll let Kevin go, and then uh, John can pick who he wants to. Um... All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. All right, starting off with Kikuchi Yusei. Wow, what a what a what a stance! Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that. Wow, that's something else right there. I've always I been impressed. I, I was happy I got to see him last year too. I, I in, or not in 2019, I should say. I've always been right. uh, Hideo, no, Hideo Nomo, like just the the pitching stances of like Japanese okay. pitching, amazing. On the bet though, Mondesi. I actually saw him in spring training a few years ago. Uh, I believe you just got this one. The, didn't you get this? The whip yeah. sleeper? Yeah. Is that what you got, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully we don't tie on that one because that looks like a pretty good card there. All right. We got 
Jock Peterson. I'm not going to say his nickname amongst all of us, we say. <laughs> it's a family show, maybe. Uh, we got Joey Votto. I laughed because you got this one too earlier. Flipping out Max Kepler. Yeah. Orange Pellel is Will Myers. We got Jeff McNeil. And come on, where's our Brewers? I, I'm not seeing it here. Uh, Yohan Mangata and Patrick Corbin. Hey, oh, wow. We'll a couple duplicates there. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, who do you want to open your pack? Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Sorry, All right. Kevin. Let's see here. It's like you guys pulled from the same box. Yeah. I have like, wait, what? All right. Let's get this open for you, John. Let's see what you got. Starting off with an award winner of Steven Strasburg. Sean Murphy. Manny Machado. Brendan McKay. Cool little picture there. We got Anthony Bundone. Oh, here's one you'll definitely appreciate, sir. Look at that one. Look at that. That character, Mr. Acuna Jr. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Right there. Off the side. We got uh, my Orange Bell's award winner, Justin Verlander. We got Ramon uh, Loyano. Hanser Alberto. And Gary Sanchez. Nice. Okay. So my high card is um, that big league bet, the whip leaders, which is 265. That, I have that card. So hold oh. on. Oh, man. What are we doing yeah. tiebreakers? Hold on. Well, let me... <laughs> Let me see. Let me see if I have anything higher, or if John has anything higher. Hold on. Uh, Hold on, John. Hold on. Hey, hey, hey! hey. <laughs> you know what's funny? That's my high card as well. Okay, yeah. so we're we're tied with two sixty five. Yeah, we're tied with two sixty five. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just do this slowly, slowly. Well, you know what, John? You have two sixty eight. Yeah, wow. and two seventy two. All right, there you so go. Nice, but you only get one point. Sorry. Okay, so this is the way we'll do this. I'll actually, I'll actually sacrifice for John. What do you mean you'll uh, sacrifice? Well, a part a part of the from this. This is the the the. the oh, good you're, gonna take, you're gonna take two out of there. Yeah. All right. I'll take two out. So I just want a point for him. Maybe he wants me to sacrifice. All right. Ah, uh, that's true too. That's true too. We'll, we'll rotate, rotate again. Yep. All right, you're up, Michael. Okay. What are you gonna pick for him? Okay, so this is this is worth two. So, oh wait, wait. You're right. John needs to make a stipulation. John, are you aware of the stipulation? I'm not. No. You, gotta you need me. to pick what we're gonna look for here. So it could be catchers. It could be lowest number. It could be um, uh, most West Coast teams. Most, you know, this this something a variable. Division, or, yeah. Our outfielders, most outfielders. Yes. Let's go with the majority of uh, National League team. Oh, okay, we go National League. All right. Okay. So now, our... mind you, we will say this is the, what your pack is. You know, I mean, if you pull on an old pack, it could be a different National League. You know. I don't know if we have any old packs in there at this point. Okay, so this is Panini Select. It only has five cards, oh, but oh, it's thick. It's oh, thick. Oh. So you could get a relic or a autograph in here very easily, and nice. you just went. You went outright. You can walk. All off. right. Let's see. That's not the Dollar Tree <laughs> Panini, is it? <laughs> it's not. No. Okay, because I remember that uh, uh, you know Angela had something from Dollar Tree that was from Panini. So if you look here, if you look uh -oh. closely, there's a big fat card. Oh, in no. Ooh, so I'm not, it could be just a thick card, but it could be something. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's what she said. Hopefully it's gum. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. Shogo oh, yeah. Akiyama. He's with the uh, Reds. Yeah, so there's one. one. Justin Turner. That's two. Two. Oh, God, not that guy. Super, Sorry. super spreader, super Justin Turner. Yep, super spreader. Oh, look Jake, at this. Perfect so far. Jacob DeGron, that's 3-0. That's already well, a winner. So the thick card is actually something they do 
in these oh. to get people not to, um, uh, it's kind of to throw people off. It's actually a blank card. What? Wah, wah, they, actually, wah. they actually throw it in there because it, it deters people from stealing. Oh my gosh. Yep. So Aaron Judge. That's really depressing. <laughs> and Marcus Simeon. He went three and he went you went three for five. You know what? Yep. You got six hundred there. Yep. Not bad. All right, who's going next? You go next, and then I'll, go, I'll go down. All right. So you got to beat three. 2020 pro. Uh, oh gosh, pro debut. So I've got to like maybe do some homework here. Yeah. Right, let me get my MILB app ready. You know what's funny is that I've had like three packs of Allen and, Allen and Ginters in here for like a good six weeks. I've not pulled. All right. Jeez. All right. Let's start off with, uh, oh my goodness, uh, El Juris Montero on the Springfield Cardinals. At least I know. That's it. You know, they're. At least, you know, at least you know, that's a Cardinal team. All right. We have Alec Baum on the Reading Fighting Phils. Yeah. You want me to confirm that's a Philly, a Philly team? I believe that it is. It is, because I see, I will show it if I have to. It says GCL Phillies. You see that? Can there you, you go. All right. I'm not out here to cheat. I'm not here to win. All right, next we have Hans Kuss. Wow, that's an interesting name. On the Hickory Crawdads. Uh, it says in 2017 he was on the Rangers. So it looks like this would be the Rangers unless he got traded. But I'll, I'll, say look, I'll, look, it up. I'll look it up. Okay. I mean, I, I can look it up really fast here. And it'll be affiliate, Texas Rangers. Hickory is Texas. All right. Yep. Next, we have Matt Walner on the Elizabethton Twins. No. Nope. So, twins, that's not. We have, it's funny, I think I've gotten this card before. Uh, an insert, ready for flight, Casey Mize on the Erie Sea Wolves. Casey Mize is uh, Tigers. Yeah, oh, cool. So yeah, I remember getting this card before, but this looks like it's a variant of it. Yep. But if you look, this one's numbered. Wow. Yep. Very cool. So that's Tigers. It is Tigers. Okay. I, I, one pick I, for the that's, Tigers. Right, that's right. And then um, Dre Jamison on the Hillsborough Hawks, a favorite team that's of the Bay Baseball blog. And yeah. I believe that would be uh, Diamondbacks. the Diamondbacks. So that's three. I got two more cards. Let's see here. We got Alex Spees on the AZL Rangers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The drama. Last but not least, I'm not even looking. I'll just get put up on the screen here. Oh, oh, on the oh AZL Cubs, yeah, I got four. Oof. Wow, that was close. Oh, I love that name, Chase Strunk. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on, at least get some brewers. We have not got any brewers in a while. My my poor drink is very full, even though I poured a second one. Right. I'm I'm parched. Please. So this is uh, Panini Prism oh, four, four four cards. Cards. So you gotta oh, be perfect. Right. That's gonna be great. So Perfection I or I win. All so right. I can't I can't win, but you tie. Oh, no, I, I can I can tie or okay. win or win with something else in it. I should have yeah. I should have well, put the you need in an the autograph card. to win. A relic would have been on the other cards in the back. I should have put a percentage stipulation in there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Josh Rojas uh, from uh, the Diamondbacks. Oh, there you go. This is Arizona. So that's one. Good start. So uh, while well, I've lost uh, oh, because no. uh, uh, Randy Arozarena. Oh, no. Card, so that's. Um, Can't, that's be right Can't be disappointed. Can't be disappointed. Keep going. Uh, Mookie Betts. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh that's, that's a fire worker. So that's, that's two. That's two. Wow, and look at this. Edwin Rios, Dodgers. Oh, Ooh. he went three for four. Three for four. Gosh, gosh, four wins. Jeez, that was, you know. That's impressive. Bad stipulation. You know, we all have no cards. <laughs> I have the most cards. I had eight. I had eight cards, you know. And But this one, this one, this is a winner here, this one. That's yeah, that's, nice that's a cool card. That's a nice pull. Number 93 and 99. So there we go. 
Thank you. Really done. Way to go. Okay. Uh, that was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. Thanks, John. As always. Yeah. See, we can make this work. I was going to, I'm actually, actually start, uh, there's a kind of like a card sharks type of thing where we do, uh, we have a card and then we turn it over and see what the number is. And then we say higher or lower, and then we can go there. We actually have some cards we could do that with. So that'll be coming. And we have I some other it involves brewers. Can it be all brewer cards? Oh, that, that'd be fun too. We can actually, I, I can I, actually do all that. That'd be fun. So let's do some baseball trivia to end it all out tonight. And um, I saw something that was actually really cool. Um, I saw the, the, I can't remember what, what account was doing this, but they were posting lineups and you had to guess the year. Oh, wow. Um, what it was. So I, I did that. I saw so, one. I can't read really the count either. Oh, my goodness. Oh my God. So I want you to look at this and then give me the year. Wow. Give me the year that this is. Well, say, King, two, King Conger is catcher for the Angels. I want to say 20, 2009, 2010. No. Okay. It's a little later than that. Maybe uh, two, I, two, I, I, Santana's the. Santana is, the, I don't know. Santana's the wild card there, but I, I believe Trout made, I want to say 2012. So I think with Trout being that low in the lineup, he, it looks, this looks like a September call up kind of. Uh, it, looks, it, looks like a, it looks like a game I even attended back then. <laughs> I want to say like 2009. Gosh, look at that Angels team. Oh, my I'm, I'm, committed, I'm committed to 2009, this one. 2009. I'm going to say 2012 because I believe that's when Trout first came up. I might it's be bubble, a year off, but bubble pucks is 2016. Jason Schaefer with uh, 2008. Cowboy Jack Durango. Uh, oh, is, I think he can only have, uh, uh, he only has two numbers on his, that work on his keyboard. 1919. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's too funny. Well, actually, Colin Duncan uh, got it, and oh, Jason corrected it. Wow. Was I was a year off. Okay. This is actually the very first game that Mike Trout played. He was up that early in July. Wow. I was yeah. thinking he was the September call-up. I couldn't recall off the top of my head. Wait, you know, All Angels podcast? Did they, come on. They, could have, they should have got that one, right? They did. Yeah, right there. Of I'm like, they better get that. If I'm not going to get them get it. Yeah. And uh, all all the runs for the Angels were solo home runs, and I think there was a walk off in the bottom of the ninth. Um, Did and you I'm know if Mike got any of that? Sorry again. Do you know if Mike Trout got any of those four home runs? No, I I think he was zero for three. And okay. uh, you know to see him uh, batting ninth, actually Hank Conger um, yeah. uh, hit a home run. Right, he was he was batting eighth, hit a home run. Hank that's, King Conger. That's right. I'm definitely a fan of that guy. <laughs> I, 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 I have to think about that. He'll be ten years in his into his career yeah, this year. Yeah, 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 absolutely nuts. And he looks exactly the same. <laughs> that, that's pretty cool. So um, yeah, I, wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to get make the lineups, but I also wanted to make it like a special game, which yeah. the next one is a oh. is uh, an interesting game as well. All right. So give me the year of this game between oh the Yankees goodness. and Athletics. Wow, look at that. That's a, Oh, my God. There's some great names in there. What was Hensley Nealon's nickname? Was it Bam Bam? God, oh. I'm trying to remember Mullins because I think that guy was like a really big prospect, and I was thinking his nickname was like Bam Bam or something. Really? I don't even remember that name. That's, that's hey, awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, actually, I'll wait. I won't look till after this is done. Yeah. I remember like, Kevin Moss more. being a bigger uh, prospect at the time. Kevin Moss, well, that's what makes me think this is 1990. But I'm going to go 89, I think. Because he came up in 90, him and David Justice. You should know that, Mr. Talwar, because Kevin Moss and Dave Justice were, like, insane their rookie year. They were, like, the phenoms of baseball, and I'm pretty sure that was 1990. So I'm trying to think if he'd be batting cleanup that early in his career. So think about this. I'll say 1991. 91. Yeah. I'm sticking with 89. All right. 89? Yeah. Okay. We have some uh, guesses in here. Uh, Bubble Pug says 1982. I think 82. 
Uh, Steve Sachs would have been on the Dodgers. He's on the Dodgers, and I think that was Mattingly's rookie year was 82. Right. Because he was one of the famous guys in the 83 – you know, I think 83 cart sets would have been Matt. Was it Mattingly, Boggs, and Gwynn? Or am I mixing people up here? I might be mixing yeah. guys up. I'm sorry. 83, I think, was Mattingly's rookie year. Yep. Yeah. So Cowboy Jack says 1969, the summer of love. <laughs> Little Brian Adams right there. Yep. Uh, Chad M says 1991. Jason right. Schaefer I mean, says 1990. I think it's one of those two Colin years. Colin Duncan says 1992. And All the right. answer is. 1991. Yeah, right. right. Oh, look at that. I love it. Yeah. And Pretty it good. was the, the day that Ricky broke the uh, all time stolen base. Nice. Uh, yeah. So, very interesting. Good spot. good spot there. I like it. Yeah. So, I, I thought that was fun looking at the, all those lineups. Yeah. Broke the record then and still played 10 years after. That's incredible. So incredible. Yeah, no kidding. It's like, woof. <laughs> he hadn't destroyed the record uh, enough, so he had. To yeah, no it. kidding. I mean, come on. Yeah. Now I can look at Hensley Mullins because I was like, I know that name. Yes. Yeah, Bam Bam was his nickname. Yep. That's awesome. I, That's I love awesome that you remember that. Like, That's Bam Bam, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you you remember stuff from the early '90s? I, I think I'm trying to think of what. Well, that's what I was thinking. Miley cards. That's why I remember that guy. Because I remember having Miley cards of his because he was like a pretty big prospect for the Yankees back then. Yeah. Because he debuted yeah. in 89 and he actually went, the, uh, he must not have done that well because he actually went, he actually played on the Chiba Latte Marines in 90, he went to them in 94. Yep. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. I, I'll definitely pull some. Uh, did you guys like uh, that? Was oh, that fun. was cool to look at all those lineups. That's, that's fun. I like, I like it. Let's go. Cool. I like I like mixing it up a little and, bit. You know what? This is why I, this is only time I feel bad for Angel because Angel might have pretty good on that one because this is like his era. I think if we went went way older, that might be really hard for some people. Yeah, for sure. Right. For sure. There. Yeah, I think we should, yeah stick in. I mix it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, this this was a good interval, at least like a 10, 10 to twenty year gap between. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. So unfortunately, we had uh, somebody pass away that in the baseball circles. Uh, Timon Lasorda, ninety-three years old. Uh, obviously, a great life. And and so, John, uh, you used to go to Dodger games, like you know, as a young kid, looking for autographs and stuff like that. Did you ever go to any in the Tommy Lasorda era? Was that or was that oh, past? Tons. Oh my gosh, tons! He was actually one of my one of my favorites. I, you know, I didn't. Uh... Initially, I was a Dodger fan uh, growing up, and then like you know, Sorry. I used to be an autograph. I used to be an autograph hound. So after the games, uh, it, typically a Dodger stadium, the visiting teams, the opposing teams would sign autographs during like the you know the early mid '90s, late '90s. Um, so I kind of fell in love with the Braves uh, as a result of that. But I was a huge fan of the Dodgers initially. Um, I mean, the sort of was managing the team then. One of my one of my the favorite games I ever went to was actually one of the most controversial games was when the Do the Dodgers actually forfeited. It you was, were uh, there. That, well, yeah. game, that actually came up in a really early episode of the podcast, yeah. of the broadcast. Yeah. So wow. I, was, I, was actually, I was actually sitting field level, like a few rows up, too. One of my friends had season tickets. And, uh, yeah, we were – I'm lucky. We were lucky we didn't get hit by baseball because like, people from, like, the reserve level and, like, upper deck were throwing baseballs out in the oh field. Oh, my God. So it was a baseball uh, giveaway that night. Oh, my yeah, God. Just tons, tons of, I, Tommy Lasorda came out countless times. There's yeah. a clip on YouTube that you can find on this, but the yeah. clip just doesn't do justice. For how like just I mean he was he was literally throwing it like his stomach into the umpire it was just yeah just incredible like just an amazing character he wasn't just he wasn't just a ball player and manager like he was a character he was a personality yeah uh, oh yeah know, even just outside outside of the the field too yeah. uh, he was like a TV personality I think uh, Kevin you had shared something recently where he was like a wizard um, yeah uh, on the '80s show the Baseball Bunch it was supposed to be like an instructional show about baseball, but it was kind of like being like funny and just get kids attention. And he played a character called the wizard. And it was every week he would give like, he would tell the kids a story about baseball or tell say, Hey, you know, and just like to help the children learn at the end of the episode and this really campy like setting. And he had like the little, like a turban, almost like a turban on his head. And he was just the wizard. I'm like, oh, this is yeah. cool. It was, yeah, it was like the, the uh, like Jambi, the, uh, yeah, like John like, B, yeah. But that was before John B because it was know, before John B, right? Started in the late 80s. This was like early 80s when I was seeing baseball much as a kid. You're talking yeah. about people that are larger than life, larger than the game. He was definitely oh, yeah. one of them. 
There's no. Well, yeah, I mean, the whole generation. He was almost like the nutri, the nutri, nutri grain. No, no, not nutri. Nutri, uh, nu uh, nutri system. Nutri system. Nutri system. Yeah, he was like that. Do that for like a decade, yeah. and he was just such a personality. He like he was almost, and then later in life, he was more like an ambassador for baseball to an extent. You know. Yeah, the only the sort of story I have, and this tells you my luck. I graduated from Cal State Fullerton in 2011, and he actually lives. He lived well, he lived in Fullerton, and uh, he was actually going to be doing the commencement speech for my graduation. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" But it's a two day ceremony, and he was the day my my department was not graduating. Oh, I'm like, wow. I was going to say tell me the story of my commencement speech. Unfortunately, oh, it wasn't. Wow. <laughs> you know, but. Definitely yeah, quite a character. Did. Just look up, look, if you haven't seen some of those sort of out, I mean, there's some amazing yeah, sort of on YouTube. The, the fight with the Philly Fanatic. Yeah. Uh, and there's countless things. Even just him coming Come out. On, Yopi. He, I don't know how you pronounce Yopi. The, he actually got the Montreal Expos mascot thrown out of a game. Yopi. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Yep. For him, like, causing mischief, like, on the dugout or something, I, I believe is what yep. it was. I imagine it meant a lot to him to see the Dodgers actually win the World Series this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just one last time. It's actually very symbolic uh, that yeah. they won and lose. I mean, you know what? I mean, for LA as well, that was like Chick Hearn as well. Like um, the last year Chick Hearn announced they won a championship. I think that's when they beat the Nets. And he passed away, I believe, before the next season started, if I remember right. I mean, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, but that was another really big LA icon. So one of the things that I um, I was going through some pictures, actually just looking for stuff to throw in here of actually of John and like I couldn't find it, but it threw in my um, pictures. I actually had this picture. This picture is actually in Dodger Stadium. If you go to, oh. I think it's like, I don't, I think it might be this like the suite level. But if you go back, they have a whole bunch of like memorabilia. And I remember, I can't remember what game it was, but there was like nobody there. So I go, you know what? I'm never going to be able to see this without people here. And so I went back and I took a whole bunch of pictures and I'm like, I took, I remember taking a picture of this cause it looked so cool, but I didn't have time to look at the autographs on it. So I, actually, see, if you look, on, I mean, so if you look here, if you look over his hat, at Milton Burl, oh uh, Pete Rose is up there. Um, Don Rickles is right by, oh, yeah. is like is here. Uh, Johnny, I see Tommy John. Uh, who else? Bill Russell. I mean, uh, there's a lot of baseball players uh, on here. I want to know who the one on the, uh, you know, who drew the little face there. I'm trying to know who that is. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't tell. But it's like, I mean, he was, uh, he was a celebrity in LA. You know, oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even exactly. went to, went to the game and just sat there and watched the game. I mean, he was a celebrity. That blew me away when I saw he lived in Fullerton. I'm like. You don't even live in LA County. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, come on, you're Mr. LA. <laughs> Look yeah. <at> that. <laughs> so it was sad to see him there. You know, like you, you I mean, God, he was 93. He thought he was going to live to, you know, 150 because he was there all the time at the games. I remember yeah. being there once. I think he celebrated like, I want to say his 50th wedding anniversary. Um, uh, he, at, he was at Dodger Stadium for like his 50th wedding anniversary to which I was. joked that he was completely cheap and took her to a baseball game. Yeah. <laughs> took her, yeah, because it's not like he has to pay to get to, to get in right. on the stadium, you know? <laughs> I think there was a, also a joke that he said, and I I'm, I'm hope I'm doing this justice, where his wife said that, um, I think you love baseball more than you love me. And he goes, I, I love you more than uh, uh, football and hockey. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what about basketball basketball wasn't mentioned i'm like wait a minute wait a yeah, minute yeah. <laughs> I, I hope I, I hope i did that that story justice um, that's all right that that sounds like something the sorter would say yeah you know he probably got funny. that line from that's that's probably a don rickles fed line to him it's completely friendly, friendly and frank oh. sinatra yeah there's a photos of him sinatra yeah and i had a picture of i actually there's a picture that i was going to put in here that he's with uh frank sinatra as well like i said he was he was a celebrity but he was a celebrity among more celebrities so oh, yeah. he was a probably celebrity two celebrities as well yep so that is the show we had uh, for you this week. Remember, um, check us out on Patreon if you want to support us. If you, if you like what we uh, put out every week, uh, we actually have a show on the 16th. It's a hoppy hour, so it's a 
Um, and uh, But I, I'll get to that in just a second. Um, we have our eBay store. Definitely check that out. We have our Etsy store. Um, and you know what? I didn't put, of course, I didn't put the, the happy hour um, stuff in there. <laughs> That's I, I was, right. I'm like, where is it at? Um, so it. it's on the 16th. Yes. And um, what, what's Steve's last name? Bryant. This is Steve Bryant. Bryant. Uh, he's from San Diego. Um, he's a member of a baseball group called Saber, S A B R. I think it's Society of American Baseball Research. I think it's what it stands for. As a long time baseball fan, I've heard of it, but I don't really know much about it. So I kind of want—I want to get him on to talk about that and talk about baseball travels because we all met him through wrestling. Because he has a wrestling website called SoCalUncensored.com. But and talking to him, you know, over the years, like, oh, you're a big baseball fan. So and he's been to a lot of stadiums. So I'm like, let's talk baseball. You know? Yep. Yep. And it, uh, Saber is the Society for American Baseball oh, Research. I was close. I said Society yeah. of. American Baseball Society. And it's always been something I've I've been interested in, and like they go back and they comb through like old stats, and yes. and you know like they really put a whole bunch together. If you're if you're a big stat nerd, and uh, I'm I've been I didn't realize how much of a stat nerd I was. Uh, I always thought that I wasn't quite into all that stuff, but I, I found that I actually really am super into it. I also like the you know the the history of the game. And there's a lot of like, for instance, like um, saves being counted, like at the turn of the century, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And you know, that, that wasn't well, even a stat back then. Yeah. Well now, I mean, we're going to see what's going to happen because of all those, you know, of all the Negro league stats right. put in too, that's going to be a lot. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with all that as well. And I'm wondering if that was, um, if they have a big part in that because somebody has to do all that research. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that is cool. Saturday the 16th at 1 p.m. Yeah. We'll be putting notes out on social media. But that'll yeah, be we'll definitely PM. put it all out there. Check yeah, us definitely. out on all the – we'll definitely put it all out there on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook uh, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Um, John, did you have anything that you wanted to promote? Uh, just uh, the show here and then also, uh, you know, shout out to one of our friends, uh, Scott Lost Comics, who actually does, uh, you know, amazing artwork. Um, I believe it actually is Twitter handle Scott Lost Comics, if I'm not mistaken, but just an amazing artist, uh, very creative, uh, much like uh, yourself, Michael. Um, so, yeah, those two things. I'm going to double check that Scott Lost thing, make sure I got that right. Because um, it, it, it's just at Scott Lost, by the way, on Twitter. Um, and, if, and if you're into comics, too, he has a podcast called Making Comics. You can let up on, if on Apple Podcasts or just do a Google search. It's a podcast about making comics that lives about making comics that he's been doing, I believe, once a week, and it's a relatively new podcast. So give a shout out to Mr. Lost. You know. Yep. And um, and you can catch Angelo. He's on Big Teach 45 on yep. Twitch. They do uh, the gaming. And Kevin, I know that you're on Twitter at? At Lock and Mole. That's L-O-K-N-L-O-L-L -L -L, on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll met you every week. If you go, if you shop on Amazon, go to beardbaseball.com, click that, scroll down, click on that page. It's an affiliate page. If you bookmark it, so whatever you use, Amazon, doesn't cost you anything extra, but you get a little kickback to the Beard Baseball broadcast to keep us up and running. Yeah, we have a, a lot of ways that you can support us and, and help us out. And uh, we love doing this every week. And, uh, you know, you guys make it all worth it. Uh, thank you for joining again. Again, we'll be have the happy hour on 1 o'clock Pacific uh, this weekend. Uh, that's the 16th of January. We'll be back here uh, for the broadcast next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Thank you, John, for joining on short notice. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, we will see you uh, next week. Uh, see you Saturday on the happy hour. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.